Hi everybody, it's Claire back with another art journal video and in this one I am creating in a very small journal. So this is the Soul Snack Tag Journal. Um, those of you that follow my videos regularly will recognise this little journal. This is made from a class by Christina Zaro um, called Soul Positive. She's on Instagram and Facebook um, and this is one of her classes. So um, I love this little journal. You know those times when you want to create and you haven't got much time. Um, you just want to do a little bit. I often uh, reach for this little journal. Um, it's just a lovely size. And the fact that the pages slip out as well make it so easy to create with. So I am using some collage paper from Tim Holtz. This has got those sort of colour swatches on. And then I'm using the colours Night, Turquoise and... Um, goodness can't think what that other one's called peacock dear me sorry about that and just scraping those colors across the page as well just to get a little bit of color on there i think when you're doing a technique like that you've got to be a bit open to the fact that it might not quite go how you want it to um and so here i'm using a stencil and just doing a bit of reduction using a baby wipe just lifting a bit of that paint off through the stencil um, this is a Tim Holtz stencil and I'm using some turquoise, popping a bit more pattern over the top of that. Um, and I think sometimes um, when I'm doing little pages like this, I end up throwing all the things at it. <laughs> um, but actually, I think it's just fun, isn't it? Just to play, just to have, give yourself permission just to... Uh, try things out and see what works and what doesn't um, and that is one of the fabulous things about art journaling is that it gives you that space to to just try stuff out so here i'm using blackberry and another tim holt stencil um, and just adding another pattern and color onto that background and then look see here this is an example of me throwing all the things at a page um, I suddenly thought, oh, I've got some paint left on my sponge. Oh, I'll just put a bit more out and then I can make some circle, <laughs> print some circles with my blending tool. Um, but actually, why not? Because that adds another element, another layer to the background. And you're kind of using what you've got. So it works. So then I started looking through my box of little bits of collage fodder. So I've got little circles that I've cut out of watercolour paper, um, little flowers that I've drawn using acrylic paint through a fine tip nozzle applicator um, inspired by the um, class by uh, uh, Wendy um, called Wonky Bits. Um, I can't remember her surname right now. I think my brain has just emptied itself. So now I'm just having a play with um, just sort of auditioning pieces and seeing what works best. Um, looking through my box of bits and bobs and also um, grabbing some pieces of uh, different types of paper and then getting out my tins that have got little pieces of collage paper in as well. Um, and just auditioning things to see what's going to work best. And sometimes this is the most fun part about doing a page like this. It is um, working out what's going to look nice on that page and also finding the bits and bobs that appeal to you um, that are going to work best. So I'll let you watch this bit where I am just faffing about auditioning different pieces um, and then I'll tell you about the rest.
So once I get it to a point where I'm quite happy with the idea of what I'm using, I am just going to use my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher and just loosely staple those bits and bobs together just so that it um, keeps everything in place and means I can then carry on um, working with what's on my page. Um, sorry, I'm just giggling because <laughs> a bird has just run across the top of the roof and it sounded really funny. Um, I don't know whether you'll be able to pick that up on the uh, microphone or not, but that's hilarious. It sounded like it had got big boots on. That was quite funny. Um, so yes, like I say, I've got little tins. This was uh, something that I got from doing the um, collage fodder Fodder, fodder school, fodder school last year um, was one of the teachers on there was sort of saying what a good idea it is to keep little tins with scraps of coloured pieces of paper in that you can use as collage fodder. You know, those little, little bits that you don't really want to throw away. Um, and I used to have them all in a box and the box got out of control. And then I decided that I would do this idea. So I've got these little tins now where I keep all my bits and bobs. Um, and it does work quite well. And I've got them kind of in colour groups as well. So that works too. So here I'm just adding more bits and bobs into this little collection. I suppose it's like a little assemb assemblage, isn't it? Um, and I've just torn the corner off that left corner of the little rainbow piece of paper that I've got there. Um, and I'm just think playing with adding more bits and bobs into um just sort of getting that contrast. So I've got those bright colours and then some bits of black and white and it just all starts to really pop. Um, but yeah, definitely a case of uh, more is better. <laughs> this is a great example of that. And then I'm just using a bit of a glue stick to stick that onto my page. I'm not worrying about whether it goes to all the edges of everything because it's going to be squished in a journal and it will keep it all in place really. Um, I'm just going to stick that in. So I think one of the joys about a little journal like this that you've made yourself is that, I don't know, somehow it feels easier to just allow yourself to play. Uh, certainly, I don't know whether you guys will agree with this or not, but when it's a bought journal that you've paid money for, um, sometimes you, there's that pressure, isn't there, to, to do something that you're going to be happy with. Whereas in a journal like this or that you've made, it's less pressured. And that doesn't necessarily have to be the case at all because your journals are a safe place for you to experiment and play. Um, but certainly I think I give myself more permission to let loose and play when I'm playing in a journal like this one, this Soul Snack Tag Journal um, from Christy Navarro's course. Uh, and certainly when I look at the pages in here compared to my other journals, I do think there's a, a bit more freedom. But maybe that's just the way my brain works. So I'm not sure. So I just used a bit of a Stabilo pencil there and water activating that as well. Um, and then I think I just added a couple more staples as well. So next I'm going in with a Posca pen and adding some dots onto the page too. So this is bringing a bit more contrast onto the page, definitely. And then I'm using a fluorescent Posca pen in pink. This is quite a chunky nib one. And I'm just adding a little pop of colour. Um, this pink is a great one to use. If you've got Dina's fluorescent paints or any fluorescent paints, you could do some splatters with that as well. Um, quite often that's a great way to add that final pop of colour to a journal page. And then I have a little bowl that has a collection of words and phrases in it that I have saved from um, old calendars that we had and cards that I've received. And, you know, those times when you just want some words to go on your journal page, it's really fun to just have a rummage through and find the one that speaks to you. 
and that's what I did. So this one in particular came from a calendar that we had, a family calendar that when it was the year was done, I snaffled it and chopped it up. Um, and I really love using those on my journal pages. So slotting this back in, as I say, it's one of the great things about this journal is that the pages come out and you can work flat. Um, you can see that does look quite busy, but it was lots of fun to create, lots of layers, lots of colour, pattern um, and lots of fun. So thanks for watching. I hope you found some inspiration from this uh, video and I hope to see you again soon.